Welcome to Successful Living with Bill Knappick. Every week we talk about success and everything that goes along with it. You'll learn the principles of success, how to achieve success, and learn to overcome challenges that may be getting in the way of success in your life. You'll hear from Bill Knappick, a radio personality and business development expert, along with insight from special guests. If you're ready to find your path to success or take the success you're enjoying to the next level, stay tuned. Successful Living with Bill Knappick is on right now. And welcome to the show, Successful Living with Bill Knappick. That's me. And today is Successful Living with Robert Sakowitz. He is the CEO and president of the Hazak Corporation, and he is a Houston visionary. Robert, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bill. It's nice to see you again. And it's always great to, to talk with you. You're a friend of the show and also of all the things we do. But as we think about the idea of success, you have been doing business and in influencing Houston and everywhere else for so many years. Let's first tell people about the Hazak Corporation, what you're doing now for the last 20-some years, 26 years. Yeah, 26, <laughs> going on 27 years. Uh, Hazak Corporation is a business strategies and marketing consulting firm. And uh, I'm a business doctor. I help companies get to where they want to get to. Sometimes they're startups and sometimes it's up to $10 billion corporations. They're large companies. Frequently, I'm called in just to help with a problem, fix a strategy, uh, come up with ways in which people can get out of a silo problem they are in, meaning that they have certain divisions that are problems. Uh, many times executives have who have built the companies, um, have so many people problems. Uh, they're very attached to the way things have happened and the way they've grown, and they don't necessarily uh, like to change. People don't like change. No doubt about it. And um, change is one of those important factors in life. There's a, a real funny thing that um, people don't like change, and yet they have uh, very short memories. And so uh, that contradiction seems to work against itself, seemingly. But uh, I help companies when frequently there are some decisions they don't want to make and don't want pointed out. I frequently ask people when I'm first uh, uh, interviewed for possibly being engaged, what, uh, what, what is it I require? And I said, I need to know what your, uh, what your white elephants are. I need to know what's the untouchable because I could get into the study and get into the work and they say, oh, no, 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 we can't do that. We can't change that. We, you know, these, these untouchable things. And yet that could be the major cause of a lot of things. And so you have to go into why is that an untouchable? What is the real root cause of, of how you're driving your company? So Sackowitz really works with multi-industry and multinational uh, companies from software to obviously my background in real estate, real, uh, retail, helping shopping centers, helping retail, consumer goods, but also... Uh, a number of uh, software companies. It's been in the energy industry, uh, supply chain management, warehouse. Uh, I'm in the coffee business and uh, vending business, a partner in uh, Fresh Brew. Uh, Fresh Brew is a, a coffee that, uh, a coffee roasting plant. It's just here on 249. I just had a cup of the black satin whole bean coffee this oh, morning. Wonderful. I love it. It's delicious. Well, we won <laughs> the wanna... gold medal with that, uh, with that blend. It's a a blend of five different beans roasted at four different temperatures. So it's very much like uh, fine wine, blending different wines, um, because there's a real scientific aspect to it. So people who say they like a whole bean of just, uh, or, or a single bean, uh, Colombian or Guatemalan, they don't get the complexities that come when you put different You're reading my in. mind. I was going to use that word two seconds ago. That's right. It's like a, a big, like in the world of Cabernets and Reds, it's a big red blend, or it's a big blend of, of many things in this, it, yes. this, one, in this one particular roast. Yeah, and uh, we won the gold medal for the American, American Quality Institute and the American Tasting Institute. Um, and now we uh, supply all of the coffee for American Airlines. We do uh, 1,700 convenience stores uh, uh, under the names of, uh, that Sunoco owns under the name of Stripes and uh, A+, plus, a number of hotels, continually trying to grow. Well, if someone, going back, and I want to back up a little bit, but going back to the coffee, if someone like me is out there and they hear about the black satin blend, the whole mm -hmm. beans, where can a consumer get that? Can they get well, it? Well, they can get it online from, from uh freshbrewcoffee.com, but also at Fiesta, 
It's at whole bean and ground, and also the K-cups, you know, the little cups that uh, go into the small machines. Uh, also at, at um, HEB, the K-cups are at HEB. But we, uh, and we just uh, secured uh, uh, an order from uh, TJ Maxx, TJ Maxx's uh, home stores. So it's, it's progressing at retail, but uh, that's quite a, kind of a slow rollout. And again, that's freshbrewcoffee.com. Backing Correct. up to the Hazak Corporation, let's right. tell people, Robert, the website for your consulting business. It is, it is uh, hazak.com, and it's as simple as that. The website shows uh, who clients have been, my background, what we do. Hazak is uh, a company, that the name of which means be strong, and we support other people's lines of business. And that's H A Z H like Houston, A Z A K. And it's interesting, your your wealth of experience, you're you're in so many facets of business and also right here in the business friendly dynamic city of Houston, Texas. So it's fertile ground for you to come up with new ideas, no doubt. And it also I think keeps you very interested and that's how people connect with you right here in Houston. All of my business has been by uh, referral. It's just been word of mouth, never been any kind of advertising specifically. Houston, as you mentioned, is an extraordinary city. I'm, I'm a, a big booster and have always been. I actually was working in New York uh, on an executive training program at Macy's, and uh, my family asked me to come back to work. The uh, executives at Macy's called me in and asked me to stay and asked me how much money I was going to be making and literally almost doubled that in their offer. And I said, whoa, I, I, well, can I tell minute. you tomorrow? i got to think about <laughs> this. Well, there was no way I was going to go back to my father and say, hey, will you meet this salary? Because <laughs> that just wasn't going to work. Um, I really thought about it all night, didn't sleep. And the next morning I went in and said that I had truly appreciated what they had done because it really sort of validated me as a person having grown up in Houston. We had newspaper ads every day and the name was in the paper all the time uh, as Sackwood Stores. And uh, I really had appreciated that genuine offer but said the reason why I was going to to uh, decline was because New York is a really tough lady. She chews you up and spits you out you've never heard of again unless you're just one of those extraordinary stars. And I thought Houston was going to be the city of the future, now, which what is what you, I told About what year is this uh, This is mumbled years ago. This was 1961, 62. Okay. 62. End of 62. And came back and immediately got involved with the Alley Theater and a number of other uh, organizations and uh, the Chamber of Commerce back then, which today is the GHP, but have just gotten involved. And Houston is the kind of city that people just don't realize what we have. So many Houstonians don't appreciate how unique we are. And you have to travel the world, as, as, as I do on business and have. Uh, you have to live elsewhere to realize that so many times you'll come up with an idea. And for instance, on the East Coast, they'll say, yes, yeah, someone came up with that about 10 years ago and it didn't work. Um, in Houston, they'll say, yes, yeah, someone coming up with that, but let us show you how we think it might work. It's such a can-do city. It's such a renewal city. It's a chance. That's why with its diversity, it's such an extraordinary place. I am a, a founder of an organization called the Jefferson Awards for Public Service, uh, and incidentally, people should go to jeffersonawards.org, like Thomas Jefferson, and it is the Jefferson Awards for Public Service gives out the Nobel Prize for Public Service nationally. It also has three prongs on its legs, which are uh, basically uh, uh, we have 148 media partners, uh, over 85 uh, corporate champions, and then a, a group called Students in Action that we help students um, help themselves with public service and doing Good works, basically, finding grassroots people. It's a great organization. I uh, got involved with that, started, uh, and still am on the board of that uh, organization. And that's the kind of thing that 
Houston really is. Houston helps people. Houston is is a city that gives uh, all too frequently a recognition of the diversity. And the reason why I brought up the Jefferson Awards is a number of years ago, one of the awards we give is the greatest public service by an elected or appointed official. That official that year was Mayor Daley of Chicago. And he was bragging that they were the most diverse city in the country. And I said, well, Mr. Mayor, I happen to be sitting next to him for lunch because I'm one of the governors. I said, Houston is about 33% Hispanic, and that doesn't mean Mexican. That means Mexican, Central America, South America, Spain, all Hispanic. We're about 22% African American, and that does not just mean Southern African American uh, historically. That means also uh, Africa, Nigeria. We have citizens from uh, the Caribbean. That is really uh, a broad international context. We have about 13% um, Asian, huge uh, Vietnamese community, uh, over 130,000 Indian Pakistani. Uh, we have uh, one of the largest uh, uh, Iranian American Persian communities, uh, Chinese, uh, and um, and 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 yes, I agree. Chicago's diverse, but you have Poles, Czechs, uh, Romanians, uh, mostly Eastern and Western Europeans. Now, which of us is the most diverse? And he looked at me and he says. All right, Robert, I'm going to have to think about that. <laughs> no, thinking about it. Houston truly reflects the world. Yes, it as, does. as you paint it like that, it reflects the world. And it also, going back to the idea of the can-do attitude, there's no question. It is here, and it, it's, it's the proof of it. All anyone has to do is just look around at the industries, the key economic drivers yes. in Houston, Texas. Just look around. Even if you're visiting on a business trip, you look around, you see the Space Center, medical, all these different things. And it is just fascinating. We are influenced by we're influenced by the world, but but the world feels us. Even when we think about the Panama Canal, right? We are connected in a, in a major way, and people have their eyes on Houston everywhere. I and think. so many people do not appreciate. Speaking of the Panama Canal, and I'm involved with that by way of a company with whom I work called. Uh, I would like Endeavor. to see it one day. I hear about it. But have you ever seen? Oh it yeah, actually? no, no. I would I've been love down to there several that. times. But but Endeavor Corporation, which is uh, one of my my client partnerships did all of the scenario-based planning modeling, which is a dynamic simulation series, uh, uh, scenario-based modeling takes assumptions of all kinds and puts them into a context so that that, the Autoridad de Canal Panama, which is the group that said, wait a second, our uh, Panama Canal is losing so much business because we are limited in our size. The maximum they could take was 4,100 containers, called TEUs, 20-foot equivalent units, to go through. And so the workhorses of the fleet today are 8,000 and 9,000 TEUs, and they're building up to 20,000 TEU vessels. So they needed to have a justification for financing it. And Endeavor did the modeling of 2,200 shipping lanes universally. Seven fuel bunkering locations report into this model four times a day. All the stevedoring costs uh, for the West Coast, the intermodal costs to go across the U.S. to mid-America, a CO2 emissions model, a dynamic demand model, and, and most importantly, ended up with, rather than starting with, therefore, new tariffs based on this whole series of studies. And so the new canal locks which was going to require $5.5 billion for construction, uh, based on these models, was oversubscribed by double. They got $11.4 billion uh, circled, uh, built the canal uh, expansion, the new locks, and now can take 14,400 TEUs. Last month, uh, the largest vessel to go through ever, 13,090, 13,100 uh, container. Wow. Went through the canal. There's no port. That's one vessel. <laughs> That's one vessel. And uh, there's there, there's no port that can take that in the United States. Uh, so they have to translighter or, or transit, transship. Um, Does that mean like break it down? Break it down and go. ship okay. it to Charleston, ship it to Savannah. 
And the Port of Houston, obviously, is not that large. The Port of Houston can take about 8,000 TEUs with its new dredging of 45 feet. It's spent all the money to dredge to 45 feet to make new crane reach, build all these new cranes, build new floorings and concrete footing so that it can stack much higher so that they can get it in, in, in inside the gate, so to speak. The problem with Houston's port at this point and our business future is getting outside the gate. The future congestion that may, we think, occur. Um, and so we're, we're talking about trying to get models with Texas Department of Transportation, with the port, with other people. And our citizens, all stakeholders in this, need to appreciate that when we talk about infrastructure investment needs, we need to be able to get around the city of Houston with our highways and freeways and get the trucks on the roads because at this point, 80% of everything that comes into the Port of Houston stays within 200 miles. 80%. Hmm. And so much of what we get from the Far East comes by way of L.A. Long Beach to Dallas and then down to us. We want that business, obviously. We don't lose what we already have. We want to expand. So we really need to have freight mobility and that is something that uh, Judge Emmett, a number of people are trying to work on, uh, Galveston Houston Area Council. But um, the public is, is so intransigent about thinking, you and I, okay, we don't want to pay toll roads and we don't want to pay taxes. Well, if where's the money going to come from? You need it from somewhere to finance it and those kind of sacrifices in order to keep your jobs, in order to keep things rolling, have to be made. So you got to make up your mind one way or the other. There's no, I mean, there's no magic bunny that's going to give us this money. And um, I, I work with this company and, and, and several others trying to come up with the models or get them to do a similar kind of modeling situation so that they can get benefit to cost ratios and return on invested capital and show how that works. And so that's that's one of the things Huzak does as well. And Robert, with the last five minutes or so of the show, let's touch upon a few things in your varied career and being involved in so many things. As far as success goes, what are some of the core principles that that help you today and that have helped you your whole life and that you've developed all these years for people listening where they could take that and incorporate it into their lives and business and personal in just well, a few minutes? That's, a big, yeah, that's right. a big question, but go ahead. Yeah. Last year. I was asked to uh, deliver the com commencement address at Texas A&M University Galveston to the class, and I have to say that I was stumped. It, I, I wrote 12 drafts before I actually ended up with what I delivered. I was so stymied, and, and my daughter Brittany said, uh, Dad, why are you so stymied about it? And I said, you know, to tell you the truth, I'm scared that what I say is not going to be deemed relevant that these young students three generations away aren't really going to listen to what I say and get bored. And she said, well, tell me a little bit about what you're going to say. And I did. And she said, you're fine. Just keep doing it. <laughs> and there were some points about recommendations of what is needed to, re to, to, to look at in your life. Uh, one is risk. There, there, there are four R's, really. Risk relationships, resolve, and renewal. And I gave examples of each of those in my life and what I've done on risk and thinking outside the box. And, you know, risk requires a balancing act of um, between your desire to differentiate yourself, to be somebody unique, uh, and timing, being too soon or too different. And I've I've been both. I've been yeah, way too early. <laughs> I've been way too early in launching uh, European designers and new concepts. Um, the The point is, when you're assessing the risk of real things, you have to learn over time that it's not the original idea, quote unquote. It's not people. I come up to me all the time. I've got this idea. I've got this idea. There are millions of new ideas every day. It's not the 
original idea. It's the execution that counts. And risk is one of those things that you have to take. And people are averse to risk, and they're risk averse. And yes, there's a certain amount of judgment with that. But you need to think outside the box, as we said. And I've got example after example of what I did with that. Relationships, if you don't understand people's cultures and you don't take the time to look at them and the way they think, then you're not going to succeed. Uh, Secretary Baker said uh, some time ago at a, a presentation that I uh, attended that the key in all of his work when he was the State Department, when he was the White House, was trying to determine what it is that other people need and see how you can get it to them and for them. So relationships are critical as to how you're going to be successful. Resolve, never give up. Never, never Winston give Winston Churchill up. made that it's so, really, that's so right. famous. Um, I had uh, this problem when uh, $8 oil came in 85 and the Sackwood stores were uh, – uh, we had a $29 million note that was called because three of the five banks were underwater and we were uh, uh, behind in, in at la- less than one half of 1% of one of our, uh, some, of, some of our covenants. Anyway, I kept working and working and working and working and wouldn't take no for an answer and found a partner, $2.5 billion partner to help bring us out. Renewal is the fourth one. And renewal is that we live in a country that is geared to the kids' version of do-over. You can actually start over again. And that's what I did. Um, Unfortunately, five years after I found my $2.5 billion partner, he went out (laughs) and took down Bonwit Teller and Sackowitz and all the rest. And so that's when I started Hazak all over again by getting phone calls from people saying, Help me with my problem because you know how to face all of these and have done so. And one thing leads to another. I think we need to have a show, Robert, just on those four pillars sometime soon. Also, let's tell people you have three websites, hazak.com, H-A-Z-A-K, right? Right, right. Freshbrewcoffee.com. I'm ready for my second or third cup right about now. Tell them the Jefferson Awards. The JeffersonAwards.org, which is a wonderful organization. If you want to feel good about yourself and feel good doing things, go to that and get involved. Very nice. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Sackowitz, you have been listening to Successful Living with Bill Nampick. And today with Robert Sackowitz, president and CEO of Huzzah Corporation and a Houston visionary, no doubt about that. And we will see you next week. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Appreciate being here.